This video is intended to serve as an introduction to rhetoric. Rhetoric is the art of persuasion. Rhetoric was defined by the Greek rhetorician and philosopher Aristotle as finding the available means of persuasion. Now, disclaimer, rhetoric is way too complex, way too big, way too complicated to define in one um, video. So that is not really going to be the goal of this presentation. Rather, the goal of this presentation is going to be to introduce you to rhetoric so you can explore it more deeply and in more complexity throughout the remainder of the semester. So this is simply an introduction to rhetoric. It can't be defined in, in just one definition. But though it cannot be defined in just one definition, it can be uh, hinted at or explored in multiple definitions. So let's look at a couple of different definitions. Rhetoric at its most uh, basic um, definition is the available means of persuasion. As I mentioned, that is the definition. Um, uh, that is the, the, the. So rhetoric in its most basic form is uh, the available means of persuasion. That is the definition that is supplied by Aristotle in roughly 400 BC. The available means of persuasion, you'll see that we have our two speakers here on the left-hand side of your screen. They are speaking to an audience. They are persuading that audience in uh, explicit and implicit ways through their emotions, through their words, through their tone, through their attitude, through uh, what they include and what they exclude from their uh, topic of conversation. So that is rhetoric in its most basic form. Uh, our second definition is from the uh, Greek uh, poet Sappho. Persuasion is Aphrodite's daughter. It is she who beguiles our mortal hearts. So I love this definition. It really captures the uh, emotion and the affectability that rhetoric contains and alternatively can inspire in people. Uh, so our next definition, rhetoric is the art, practice, and study of human communication from Andrea Lunsford. This is a uh, fantastic definition. It is clear. clear. It is sushin. It is um, direct. It's not playing any games. It's not reinventing the wheel. Rhetoric is the art, practice, and study of human communication. Diane Davis calls rhetoric a more fundamental affectability, persuadability, responsivity. Sanja and Karen Foss call rhetoric uh, an action human beings perform when they use symbols for the purpose of communicating with one another. Casey Boyle calls rhetoric an ongoing embodied mediation. Kenneth Burke calls rhetoric the resources of appeal the resources of appealing to arguments or of creating arguments. George Kennedy has the most complex definition yet, but I think a good one. He, uh, George Kennedy calls rhetoric the energy inherent in communication, the emotional energy that impels the speaker to speak, the physical energy expanded in the utterance, the energy level coded in the message, and the energy experienced by the recipient in decoding the message. And then finally, a second definition from Kenneth Burke, Kenneth Burke calls rhetoric the use of words by human agents to form attitudes or to induce actions in other human agents. So rhetoric is complex. Rhetoric can't be defined to just one definition. But for now, um, if you think of rhetoric as being synonymous with the creation of arguments, with the stating of opinions, with the use of evidence, with persuasion, that will do just fine. Rhetoric is the art and practice of human communication. Now, so rhetoric at its most basic form uh, consists of an author, a text, and an audience. And of course, we use these, defin these uh, words, author, text, and audience, very loosely. So this can come in many forms. You can have the kind of a conventional form, public speaking. Rhetoric was first codified in ancient Greece um, when uh, public speaking in public forums was the primary dominant mode of public communication. You'll see, obviously, this, is, um, uh, this has not changed. Uh, think of a uh, political convention. Think of like the Republican National Convention or the Democratic National, National Convention. It consists of speakers standing before an audience, standing before television cameras, and laying out policy plans, laying out attitudes, laying out a vision for the next, say, four years. We, of course, see Martin Luther King Jr. here. He would be considered the, the author here. Even though he's not writing anything, author is used loosely. He is the speaker. He is the creator of the, of the text, which is the I Have a Dream speech that he is delivering to an audience. Um, so the text is that actual I have a dream speech. The setting and the audience are uh, obviously present. The audience here is the crowd, is the public, are the television cameras that are um, listening and watching the I have a dream speech. Um, so the author and text and audience are loosely defined here. So this can, could consist of, uh, the author could be a person with a smartphone. The text could be a TikTok uh, that they're making of, of a dance routine. And the audience could be the, the publics and the audiences who are fed that uh, TikTok by an algorithm. And similarly, it could be the author could be someone writing out a, a tweet or a Facebook status 
the text could be that tweet or that Facebook status, and then the audience could be, um, you know, some, uh, you know, people uh, coming into contact with those texts on a newsfeed. And similarly, it could be someone making a podcast. Um, but all right, so let's look at examples of, of of rhetoric. So rhetoric appears all over. Rhetoric is impossible to escape. You can't get away from it, no matter what you do. You'll see a very blurry photo here uh, on the right of a Twitter feed. Uh, Twitter is one example where rhetoric impacts our lives in every single day, and this is, of course, generalizable to all social media. Uh, visually, through audio, through video, in lots of different ways, directly through text and language and writing as well. But uh, Twitter um, and particular tweets and people, particular people, authors writing tweets uh, certainly is a, is a great example of rhetoric. You're persuaded in subtle, implicit, and explicit ways each and every day. Uh, we are uh, persuaded visually through rhetoric. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you have this uh, public service announcement. I just pulled this off Google Images. It's kind of interesting, though. You'll see this is intentionally emotional. You can tell that it's a public service announcement, uh, I believe, either against drunk driving, I believe against drunk driving, or possibly against texting while driving. Um, it is quite blurry. But you'll see that it uses intense emotional imagery to showcase a sad scene, a very emotional scene. Um, it uses a hashtag, hashtag stop the swerve. So um, definitely uses uh, visual rhetoric to persuade you to not text while driving or to not drink while driving. Uh, rhetoric also appears in a bunch of other forms. Uh, behind this word rhetoric here, in the middle of your screen, you'll see there is a uh, speaker or a uh, microphone. This is an example of um, rhetoric through audio. If someone creates a podcast, that podcast is going to persuade you to develop certain attitudes, certain approaches, certain perspectives, certain um, ideologies. Um, same with music. music. Music is intensely rhetorical. When you listen to a song, it affects you in some way. It impacts you. It puts you into a certain frame of mind, a certain emotional state, gives you a certain perspective on some social or political issue. That is certainly rhetoric. That is certainly rhetorical. Uh, you'll see that there is a public speaker. In this case, I think it's probably a teacher or possibly a college professor in the top right-hand corner of your screen. That is certainly rhetoric. Um, the speaker is going to implicitly or explicitly make arguments, state opinions to the uh, audience, is going to use evidence, is going to possibly give an uh, example from her own personal experience. That is all rhetorical. That is all rhetoric. Uh, advertisements are rhetorical. You'll see this Starbucks advertisement in the middle. Certainly is uh, going to try and persuade you to buy uh, Starbucks coffee instead of Dunkin' Donuts, instead of some other coffee brand. Um, of course, Starbucks never looks this good. It's an advertisement. Advertisements are successful if they get you to buy their product. So uh, advertisements, commercials are trying to persuade you. They're trying to make an argument. They're trying to argue to you that you need to buy their product. And then finally, we have uh, uh, a TikTok feed. TikTok is obviously, as I mentioned, going to be quite persuasive. It is going to be persuasive in subtle and implicit ways oftentimes, sometimes very explicit ways, but it's going to put you into a certain frame of mind. It is going to make subtle, implicit arguments about the world. It is going to convey ideas about the world. Rhetoric is really just ideas. Um, so let's talk about the rhetorical appeals. I'm going to make a separate video on the rhetorical appeals. Hopefully these are a little bit familiar to you because this is not going to do them justice, so look for the next video. But uh, the three rhetorical appeals are ways that people make arguments, ways that people uh, use rhetoric to convey ideas, to... Um, get someone to take on your point of view, your perspective. Um, so the rhetorical appeals are ethos and pathos and logos. So pathos um, is the use of an um, the, so pathos is the use of emotions in your appeal. Uh, pathos, uh, an example of that would be a heartwarming story, a personal experience, humorous jokes, pitiful photographs, etc. Uh, pathos is using emotions and using emotional appeals to have someone take on your perspective, your point of view, your um, opinion on some matter. So pathos is very easy to use for deceptive purposes. Uh, pathos doesn't use any kind of proof, but it rather uses emotions to um, encourage someone to take on a certain frame of mind, to encourage someone to take on a particular perspective in relation to a, so a social, a political, or a um, ideological issue. So pathos is the use of emotions to make arguments. Uh, we have logos here. Logos is uh, the use of um, statistics, facts, reasonable arguments, logical organization of information. It's the use of numbers. It is the use of uh, evidence. So evidence is always connected to logos. Logos is logical. Logos is scientific. 
Logos is empirical. Logos uses uh, reason to make arguments and to state facts. Uh, then finally, we have ethos, the final rhetorical appeal. Uh, ethos um, comes from the same Greek root as the word ethics. Logos is the use of credibility and trust to make arguments or to supplement arguments. Ethos inclu includes uh, quotations from professionals, customer reviews, celebrity endorsements, personal qualifications, etc. Think of um, like when you're watching a commercial and a famous celebrity pops into the commercial. That celebrity is there to use their ethos to sell the product. Uh, ethos is credibility. It is believability. It's likability. Ethos is the um, ability to make an argument based upon someone liking you, someone thinking you're trustworthy, someone thinking you have professional expertise. Um, ethos is the use of credibility and trust to make an argument. So that is a very brief, very pre preliminary introduction to rhetoric. Um, rhetoric is far more complex than this video could ever intend to capture, but it's a good introduction. It's what you need to know right now.